Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to another Supreme Commander epic. That's right ladies and gentlemen, straight back from the weekend and you walk headlong or headfirst into an hour plus game. So as always guys, leave plenty of time for this one. Uh, first of all, many of you will have noticed and I know you have because of the comments that have been popping up on the videos that the previous two casts after YouTube had completed its processing did not emerge at 1080p only at 720 um, I have submitted a support ticket to YouTube but uh, suffice to say when you own the entire world the uh, cares and troubles of small fry YouTubers such as myself uh, I can imagine are pretty insignificant but we'll see what happens as far as I'm aware I haven't changed anything on my side I did notice when I was tinkering that one of the codecs for the video codecs was running at standard instead of high on my XSplit that's the program that I use to record these and uh, I have adjusted that back up to high. Whether or not that makes the required difference or not, I don't know, but we shall see how it goes. Please bear with me if 1080p does not emerge today. I'll be gutted if it doesn't, but uh, we can only uh, trial and error it and see what happens. Anyway, that's enough of all that. Let's get on with today's game. Like we said, it's going to be full of epicosity, and that epicosity is going to take place on Canis 5v5 Special Edition. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how these guys are going to get on. So it's the map we all know and love, but with two minor alterations, and those alterations are an extra player for each team. Let's take a look at said players. We'll call this Team 1 up here at the top as usual, and this Team 2 down at here at the bottom. Let's go first for Team 1 up here at the top in Elephantine Grey. It's SB Nexus. He's obviously handling early air, and rather curiously, he's gone Cybran as well. I would have at least thrown down a land factory first and then started to worry about the air, but he's not worried, obviously, about the engine penalty whatever let him get on with it he's open first air good luck to him anyway and down here for team one going secondly must be a distant cousin of the infamous wet lettuce or indeed it could just be the same chap who's changed his name it's moist lettuce he's going aeon opening first land and uh, going baby blue and uh, thirdly for team one up here played with this guy the other day it's shadow or Shadow Israel, Shadow Israel. I'm going to call him Shadow since that's how everyone else was referring to him, and I don't want to offend anyone. That's probably my best bet. He's chosen Vivacious Violet and Noble UEF. Well done, sir. He's open first land, second air. Going fourth for Team 1 down here, also going UEF. It's Deja Vu, and he's going first land. And last but not least in Baby Pig, already on his way out east, it's Hepco. And he's gone Cybrin first land. So let's take a look at Team 2. ACU's already splitting. Heading out east down here at the bottom in Halley Borange Orange going Aeon. It's Sid. He's open first air. And of course, that's perfectly reasonable when you're Aeon. So we won't question that. Secondly, for Team 2, already heading north, it's Super in Pontiff White. And he's opened first land going Seraphim. Thirdly, uh, here we've got Apophidas, who used to be one of my most consistently casted average shows, or certainly one of the most replays that I used to get for average shows. And uh, he's no longer an average Joe. He's sitting at 1,600. Last time I cast him, I believe he was on about 1,230, 1,240 or something. He's at 1,600 now. He's been busy. Anyway, he's going dual first air. Moderate little engineer penalty for him, but he's not too worried about that, obviously. And Griff, 1991 chose his name there specifically to make me feel old well done good job you succeeded he's going uef in regal purple lots of uef in this one gone first and second land and already out west go west if you're boohoo tech go to the plateau and build a factory that's enough of that i think anyway he's going uef as well tons of uef in ferrari red and he opened one two so first he's just going land all day it's a special unwritten rule when you play canis and you choose uef red and you're in the western position you're only allowed to build land factories not many people know that but bootech there conforming to the rules very nicely done so anyway those are the players and that's how they stack up already out to the middle and already on an upgrade there we've got super very early upgrade indeed nice bit of teamwork as well from Sid brings up an NG there to speed that along we'll take a look at what that upgrade could be in just a sec session uh, just a session just a second I'm gonna go out on a limb there and say that that's probably gun 
And early gun on Canis can make a massive difference. That's very early indeed. Inside uh, five minutes. We've got another gun on the way there for Griff. That's going to be range. And T2 coming for Deja Vu. So two different stakes. We're going to have tanky base defense up here from Deja Vu versus aggressive Rambo Com from Super. I'm guessing. I don't know 100%, but I'm guessing. Super takes a bomb there from Deja Vu. Very nice work. And now we've even got a few land units coming up from Bootech. And they sense the bomber incoming as well from Deja Vu. But a beautiful little duke keeps them alive. One engineer manages to survive as well for Moist Letters. Good work for him. He's going to be throwing a T2 upgrade on his factory there. Quite far forward that. Nice and bold. But another bomb dodged from Bootech. Great work. And now more engineers are going to die because of that pilot's ineptitude. You are fired as soon as you get back to base, assuming you don't die in a fire. Not sure your uh, commanders will be terribly disappointed should that happen, but engineers under threat once again. Down they go. So much trouble caused by these two strikers. Great work there from Bootech. Finally going to get taken care of, though, as they come to a halt in front of that mechs. But that mechs does get taken down. So much trouble from two strikers. Great to see. And generally, the harassment seems to be coming from Team 2 at the moment. We had a little bit of a push up here with a couple of units from Super early on. They were chased off by Hepco's ACU. And Super now continuing to press with a... ACU with gun upgrade there and another upgrade coming as well. This is rapidly going to become the most dangerous thing on the field. Yeah, so that first upgrade definitely wasn't T2. He's still sitting at 11,500 hit points. Of course, the engineering upgrades on the comm increases hit points. Something worth bearing in mind for the newer players out there. A few bombers coming in to try and tidy up some of super straggling T1 units that are still causing issues here. Mech still under pressure, taking one hit at a time for one remaining Tham, and I think it's going to be able to take that out, actually. There it goes. And now some more units coming in from Sid as well, heading for the gap. We haven't got a great deal on the ground in the base at the moment. See Hepco desperately trying to throw together some T1 PD. But that engineer is slaughtered long before he can complete the build order. And Shado is forced to bring his ACU out of the center of the base and defend this eastern approach. Taking his sweet time, man. And in comes a Rhino as well from Hepco. Lapping those units once at a time. Very nicely done indeed. So let's take a look at the territory split here you can see uh, it's looking at about 55 percent i'd say for team two at the moment but we have got a push on the cards from bootek and griff at the moment We've got a split of red units here for bootek some pushing up towards the plateau some coming up towards the river but griff's acu is coming very far forward indeed so ballsy play here And that was actually T2, that second upgrade there for Super, which is allowing him to get a little bit of a firebase together. Plus 14,500 hit points now on that com with extra damage. That's a nasty piece of kit up front. Now this is not going well for Team 1 at all. Griff stomping his way up here. Looks like he's got the run up gun upgrade there on that com. There we go. Zeph and, and Nano Repair as well. So Griff and Super really pushing hard with their comms in the first 10 minutes in this one. Nexus trying to come in around the side of the hill here with a wave of Mantis, but just not going to be enough with the amount of firepower that's on the ground here between Griff and Bootech. Moist Lettuce does have a handful of obsidians in the area. Needs to be pretty careful though. There's a lot of firepower up here for Team 2. 
comes a stinger from Shado as well. And for the moment, T2 without any ground to air firepower to deal with those gunships. Griff needs to be a little bit careful. Down to around 6,000 hit points. Deja Vu throwing together some units of T1 PD. And Griff is going to have to make for the water here, but a perfectly timed little piece of veterancy there saves the day. Deja Vu trying to wall him in and impede his progress as best he can. And now we're up to two stingers wailing away on Griff, but he's going to get into the water. No problem there whatsoever for him. Down he goes, submerged to safety. And we've actually got TAC missiles coming in from Butek, who's also got his ACU up front. 15,000 hit points on that puppy. So very aggressive playstyle here for from Team 2. A lot of ground gained on the ground in this one. Butek now with a mild gunship problem. A few interceptors patrolling overhead for Shado to try and keep those alive as well. In comes Apophanas with his own interceptors. Not enough to change the fortunes. We've now got interceptors in place for Deja Vu as well. Skyboxer incoming though and that will end the issues for Butek. He'll be able to continue his progress but look at the amount of mongoose that have suddenly turned up. That is a ton of mongoose that Griff has got in his possession there. Nice little bit of micro avoids some of that oblivion turret fire. They're actually heading up onto the ridge and Mongoose, of course, with decent range. They're probably going to be able to cause a few problems for this little encampment down here. And remember, this is Moist Lettuce's T2 headquarters. And by the way things are going now, I would say that that was... Probably a mistake throwing that up that far forward. Yes, it might have been quicker, but that factory, that headquarters is now in jeopardy and uh, it's going to have to be rebuilt if it gets taken down. The way things are going, I think that's probably quite likely to happen. How things going to the east? Well, Super is still underwater, but he's pummeling Deja Vu's forward position there with some Seraphim mobile missile launchers. Good work being done in the east by Sid. A little bit of a run by there from Hepco, but it's all T1 coming up against predominantly T2. Although getting around the back here is a bunch of build capacity that those Mantis could slaughter. Oh, going to roll right on past it. I don't blame him though. Obsidian is uh, very bad for your health indeed. But look at that, Deja Vu now fighting to try and keep Moist Lettuce's encampment in one piece. But that's not going to happen. Down he goes into the red. Below 4,000 hit points, Deja Vu forced to back up into the water. So many mongoose in this area. And that is going to be the end of that factory. Look at all the T2 factories that are popping up here. He's not going to be able to build any more T2 units out of those once that headquarters gets destroyed. Super emerging onto the beach for a second, taking a little bit of fire there from that T1 PD. Looked like the overcharge buried itself straight into the ground on that one, but the second one didn't. That connects and down goes that PD Super should have no problems in breaking this position now, especially not with reinforcements arriving from the west from Griff. That is one dead position. A T1 and T2 land factory and a T2 power generator is going to be very painful to lose indeed for Deja Vu. Down it goes, and now he is sucking power from teammates to stay afloat. But in come a wave of Corsairs from Nexus. That's going to persuade Super to back up into the water. Drops him down to uh, 11,500. Still a decent amount of hit points, but around 50% of total HP that was at the time. A wave 
of units coming in now from Team 2. That is a formidable looking army. We do have ambassadors on the field, so Shado has made it up to T3 air, but this is very bold, or in fact, maybe foolhardy. Out he's coming to try and stem the tide of this attack with his ACU down to around 1,300 hit points. Just look at the amount of T2 rolling in the front door from Team 2. Lots of mongoose on the field now, quick with parashields and everything. Shado down to around 8,000 hit points and falling. There has been a recently constructed T2 shield generator thrown together there by Moist Lettuce. Shado backs up into it, but that shield isn't going to last for long. There it goes, and Shado gets a rank of veterancy at the perfect time, but there's too much firing coming, surely, and down he goes. Meanwhile, there's been a major engagement over in the west. Griff rolling onto the land to affect yet more damage, this time on Moist Lettuce's main base. Deja Vu and he going toe-to-toe -to -toe at the moment, but he needs to be real careful. What the f I don't even know what happened there. What? That might have been a TAC missile or something. Something finished him off. I couldn't see what it was. Moist Lettuce came in from the south, but he had a ton of HP left. Maybe it was uh, fighter bombers. I don't know. It, no, it must have been deja vu. It must have been. Looking at the score, he picked up the kill. But what he did it with, I am unsure. It looked like he had a decent amount of hit points. But anyway, that evens it up. So just 30 seconds later, after the demise of Shadow, Griff goes down. And uh, so much of the hard work that's been done by T. Team 2 has been undone by Griff's impetuous nature. And now a ton of T1 and T2 are in the base for Super. Fortunately for Team 1, we have T3 in defense. Loyalists and Titans going to town on the remnants of that army. No major damage is affected. What a packed 20 minutes this has been. Coming up to the 19 minute mark now. So much has happened already. Now we've got T3 Strat incoming there from Sid, taking out what's left of the power in Hepco's base. Where does that put him? Well, that puts him at drawing power from his teammates as well and another attack from Sid destroys Deja Vu's T2 power he's getting a decent amount from somewhere though I'm not seeing any T3 power generators in his possession so it's gonna I'm gonna have to assume that's a RAS upgrade on his comm his commander's down here Ailing slightly on the micro there. So we've got T2, and there we go. Resource allocation. So that is keeping him and his team afloat at the moment. Shows you just how important and handy a RAS upgrade is on this one. But look at this cheeky little tag missile base we've got over in the west from Bootek. And who's he going for? Gosh, you could ground fire Deja Vu's comm if you got a read on that. Going after the TMD to start with for Nexus. No doubt wanting to shut down ultimately his air production. That would be ideal. And now T3 bombers coming in from a Pofinas and a beautiful strap bomb right in between those two T2 P gens. Takes out both of the power generators and causes a huge amount of collateral damage amongst the build capacity that's sitting around it. Now we've got some restorers on the field for wet letters. They're going to go around and hoover up some of the random units deposited around the area from Team 2. And suddenly, the action, which has been pretty constant for these, this first 20 minutes, subsides. 
as the game goes into a new phase. That's a solid base that Super's got here up front. And this is where Team 2 need to be a little bit careful. Because you can make a ton of territory up on the ground. But if you don't upgrade your eco, if you don't stay in touch with the air game, you can still lose. And I found this out very recently indeed. Played a game of Canis only the other day where we were in this exact situation. We were winning pretty much on every front on the ground. And then the Restorers turned up and we just couldn't contend with them because Team 1 had gone and taken two players out of the equation on the ground and put them both into air and we just couldn't keep up with it. So this is the danger time for Team 2 here. They need to be very careful. They mustn't overstretch themselves. They need to make use of the extra mass points that they've gained over the course of the opening stages of this game. Sid definitely couldn't hear me there. Happy to throw away that army. Why not? It's fine. Everyone knows Kyle doesn't actually know anything about this game anyway. The secret's out. Nice little bit of micro there from Deja Vu. Titan trying to dodge some of the Mongoose fire, but in comes some Titans there from Butek. So Butek transitioning nicely into T3. It's going to be absolutely essential for Team 2. If they want to stay ahead in this, they cannot be outdone by Tech. They've got to stay on top of their development. They can't just continue to press and push. The amount of T3 on the field now for Team 1 will shut that down. I think it's fair to say we are getting to that stage. We've got T3 pretty much everywhere for these guys now. Super may be a little bit behind on tech. So this is potentially a vulnerable point. Actually, no, no. We have got siege tanks rolling up to the front. So Otham's in play. Of course, though, Round-wise, Seraphim not the strongest. A little bit of ground being gained maybe over the causeway there. That's kind of interesting. Of course, uh, this was a major weak spot in the early game there for Team 1. Griff forging a path right the way up the center for finally dying up here. So this is where most of the pressure was gone, but now he's gone. That leaves a weak path, and if there's any way or territory to be gained, Deja Vu no doubt realizing that that is the area he can take, move up, and if they can do that and isolate this position, it might be in good shape to get back in on this one. Another upgrade, upgrade completes there for Super. Where are we now on upgrades for this chappy? So we've got Nano, Repair, T3, and the Chronoton Accelerator. That is a nasty piece of kit. Lots of anti-air being thrown together in the river. And that position is basically dying down. That's why we've got Super backing up into the water. The spearheads, T3 mobile missile launchers for Deja Vu, which kick out a huge amount of damage, incidentally. Moving a little bit too much for that firebase to contend with. Meanwhile, a push slightly further to the east from Super unlikely it's going to be able to cause any damage might potentially be able to get into the main base voice letter saying we need nuke defense I wonder if he spotted a nuke launcher in play for team 2 well I'm not the best at spotting things but can't see one as yet maybe he's just concerned about the time A 
Got a few Othams left in there. But going to need quite a few to break through all this point defense. And now with all these loyalists coming up behind them. Not sure that's going to cause any major damage. Lots of Ravager fire coming from over there. And it's going to be the end of it. West Lettuce comes in with a shocker. Why not? Just to finish things off. But look at that. What on earth? That is a nuclear explosion. Okay, so Deja Vu has gone Billy Nuke. And he's hit this position. And they followed it up with an air attack, which has taken down the actual shield. That's caused Butek to flee the area. And he actually went down to around 5,200 HP. So that was a decent snipe attempt. Now we've got Corsairs coming in from Nexus as well. And a Billy Nuke targeting on top of Butek as well. Is there any TMD to sum up here? It's going to be close. Run, Butek, run! Oh, my ass. It's really warm. Look at that. That'll give you a suntan. <laughs> Butek survives. It gives you an idea just how weak the Billy Nuke is. It has to be for the rate of fire that's on the com. He's stronger and it would be OP as hell. But uh, you connect. You can take out a com nice and easily land it right on top but the uh, outer damage radius is minuscule uh, demolishers now working on supers new fortifications that have been thrown together in the river having dealt with very thoroughly indeed that forward firebase there's another one slightly further back that he can retreat to doesn't look like deja vu has pushed his way out too far but what that's another billion you it's the one problem when you're commentating on a game where someone has gone billy and they're firing them out again and again. Every single one makes you think that you've missed a com kill. But with a 5 on 5, you can bet your chances that generally com kills are going to get missed sooner or later. Monkey Lord online for a Hepco. Another one on the way a little bit further back. Attack missiles being launched. And T2 Mechs is getting taken out. So much going on. We haven't even had a chance to look at Eco in this game. See who's actually doing better. We might be able to take a look at it at the next lull. But at the moment, there's a bit of an experimental incursion going on there from Sid. GC strolling into the center of Team 1's base. There are a lot of Percivals, though, and Ravagers in the area. So much fire incoming, and I think all that's really going to do... Well, it managed to take down T3 P-Gen. Nearly took out two of them, but that's a massive mass delivery there for Team 1. Deja Vu says his anti-nuke is dead. That's kind of interesting. Have we got any nukes in play? Well, we've got a nuke on the way, and when I say on the way, the nuke launcher is being built, so a long time before that is ready. I don't know if there are any more on the fields, but they seem incredibly concerned about it. I think that is mainly based on the time. Maybe they got a glimpse of that being built a while ago and uh, it hasn't really progressed in that time, but they're expecting it to have done. Another Billy Nuke onto the causeway and you can just see how well Utex Unix shrugged that off. That was decent AOE damage but it won't wipe out a whole army of units like a regular nuke will do there's boot tech's uh, commander expect him to run all the way home by now and uh, i think there he is yeah he's in his base not a bad decision if you ask me there's percy's up front uh, getting beaten on quite hard by this group of restorers from Moist Lettuce. Utek brings in his own modest band of ASFs flanked by 
a Poffiness. Poffiness is going to be able to take down a few of those gunships. But an experimental engagement going on right next to Super's Com. Down goes the Monkey Lord, and that should be free mass for Super if he's careful. There's a lot of units on the ground, both from Hepco and Deja Vu in the immediate vicinity. I think it was worth standing in here and pocketing that mass, though. And... Gonna be able to keep this alive. I don't know if he is. Now he goes. Super looks like he's emerging from the water. And then changes his mind. No doubt wants to stay out of range of that ion storm. Nuke defense down here. So now we've got more commitment to the nuke launcher. That's about to get completed there for Sid. And greedy looking harbingers moving in from Sid. They're going to get in and scoop the mass. There they go. Lots of uh, conversations going on. A little bit too fast for me to keep up with. Shadow asking his teammates from beyond the grave not to allow Team 2 to get their hands on all of this mass. I'm very surprised Super is scooping it up at range from his comm from the relative safety of the water. a missed opportunity there. Monkey Lord now in the area. And this actually puts a lot of mass potentially in the hands of Team 1 who've already benefited from the GC attack up here. Didn't do a great deal of damage. Provided a large mass boost. So many demolishers. Super needs to be really careful here. Head pretty much above the water there. Another explosion from the Billy. It's refreshing to see someone go Billy Nuke. You hardly ever see it. But no, super, super, super. That's incredibly unfortunate. He's trying to dodge. But nothing he could do was going to get him away from that Monkey Lord. And now Team 2 lose that forward man who did a lot of good work early on. But I have to say was a little bit all out and didn't seem to upgrade into the mid game really Not properly. He was just a little bit static. Wasn't able to press. And now this is a very dangerous looking army up here from Team 1. The pendulum well and truly swinging in favour of Team 1 now at the 35 minute mark. In come the build capacity. In comes the build capacity I should say from Sid. Wanting to pick up that mass but losing engineers to the Ion Storm. Uh, eventually dissipates. Now, taking a look at the spread, that's a lot of shockers. Do we have a snipe on the cards here? Well, Apophanas is... No, that's not. That's a, an SCU, so Apophanas is being cheeky by renaming support commanders but they're not going for him anyway they're going for Bootek wave of shockers, first three deploy their bombs, they impact on the shield the shield is now down and none of the others get through for a follow up good defensive work there from Sid 
gets his ASFs in behind those strap bombers. Takes them down. Butek promptly re-establishes his shield grid. Not a bad idea. Anti-nuke is up for Team 1. That monkey Lord making some decent headway down here in the east. This is a very good route for a Monkey Lord generally. If you can uh, not get discovered, obviously that hasn't happened here. But you get in down here using the stealth on the Monkey Lord and then come in from the side. Sometimes you can really surprise people on a Canis. And that was the T3 HQ there for Sid and his ground factory is down it goes it's going to have to rebuild that if he wants to make any more t3 land units so we've got one heavy artillery installation nearly completed for team two and another on the way so it's an interesting development in tactics another explosion up here at the front from deja vu firing uh, Billy's like there's no tomorrow. Now we've got Percival's rolling in and threatening the production of that GC. Sid brings his ACU out to help deal with the defense. Needs to be very careful. Takes an awful lot of damage down to around 11,000 HP. Gets back into the water. Now that his GC has turned up and that is the end of that little push but my my how the dynamic on the ground has changed over the last 20 minutes Butex forward base now looking like it is headed for the scrap heap there's a lot of shockers in the sky from lettuce and his ASFs just busying themselves for the moment tidying up the area and providing a path for those strats to come back in there's not a lot left now here for Butek and in comes another pass imagine the flak is going first there it goes and of course that fusion reactor very high priority indeed another Billy detonates I hope I'm not seeing any <laughs> exit signs no Butek still in it uh, we've got only one UEF player left for team two so any explosions down here that look like UEF if Butek's name doesn't pop out then we know it's a Billy not a fat boy under construction down here at the bottom left how's that first fat boy doing well it's rolling forward a decent amount of experimentals on the field now for team two an assist ping goes out presumably from Deja Vu himself asking for a bit of engineer assistance maybe a little extra build capacity often asked doing what he can to keep a lid on the air power from lettuce it's really difficult though lettuce with a ton of ASFs in the air but Sid is going to get involved it's going to come down to micro and I think it's gone a little bit better for Sid Lettuce pulls out. He's going to lose an awful lot on the way. He should have just stayed in and committed. Would have taken a few down with him. But look at this push from Deja Vu. And now we've got artillery fire raining down from Epophanas. He's managed to complete that T3 static artillery. And going straight after Nexus, who's working on a bug at the moment. That is what uh, Lettuce is referring to. Unhappy with the playstyle from his teammate. <laughs> Once again, that might be Poffinas's ACU. It's not. Once again, it's the cunningly named or renamed SCU. Poffinas and Sid going to try and hold the pass with a couple of experimentals. There's an awful lot of Percivals on the ground there. They're going to bear down on the damaged Colossus first. Wise decision. No, I spoke too soon. They're going to change things up and go after the Ithota first. That's uh, actually a bit of a mistake in my opinion. 
Should have gone for the Colossus first, but down it goes, and the Ion Storm, meanwhile, going to tear them asunder. As it's right in the middle of that entire T3 group. And it does actually look like Apophanas is retargeted towards Lettuce, and that's not a bad decision because Lettuce is really or has really been causing them some problems in the air in the last 10 minutes or so. They cripple that power grid, take out some build capacity. They could be in a pretty good place posi positionally speaking. And that other artillery piece there, very nearly complete. Sid retasking a ton of build capacity to hurry it up. I love the ebb and flow of these longer games, chaos of the early stages, the stalemates of the mid game. And the nail-biting, sometimes clinching, ends to the late game. And now we're sitting at a 4v3. Numbers thinned out dramatically. Three players down. the dynamic of the game changes but that bug is now complete for Nexus and another impact from Deja Vu's commanders still sitting up here in the lake but I feel it could go after more of these pockets of units and cause some damage really new landing right in the centre here would be a nice one Right at the front of the shield, perhaps. That crab up top from Hepco causing problems for Sid and his Colossus as he hides it in around the corner of the cliff. And the Fat Boy would be the ideal tool to stall this attack, but it's way out west. As, uh, Utec generally concerned predominantly with covering that side of the map. And Deja Vu correctly surmises that a second RT is online. A large explosion this time. It's a support commander. I think that was probably Apophanas's there. Wave of strats come in to finish it off. I'm actually sure that was a decent trade. If he loses all the strat bombers, well, it might work out that way. And another bug emerges. That's actually been gifted over. It's the same bug, but it's been gifted over to Moist Lettuce. Which you can see emerges from the water to put some damage on Hepgo's crab there who turns his rear end and backs into the laser that's definitely one of the more peculiar strategies I've seen I just I thought I felt like losing a few thousand extra hit points for no good reason it's very fashionable everybody's doing it but Butek playing a blinder right now it looks like he's making ground up here at the top another Billy out from Deja Vu is going to land right on top of the fat boy and take it down to half shield and that really illustrates just how weak that Billy Nuke is a trade of fire now between the two uh, artillery based experimentals in the game 
Butek trying to hide up behind the cliff. He manages to keep us alive as the crab goes down. A little bit of crossfire, of course, from Sid's Colossus. Another one on the way for Sid as well. 46 minutes gone in this game and I'm just not seeing enough of a commitment in the air game from team two and this is what's really scaring me for them that lettuce continues to get these dominant roving packs of ASFs together every time he loses one another one springs up and it springs up quicker than the antithesis arrives for team two And Deja Vu actually getting ground fired here by the fat boy. Who has zeroed in on his location. Wave of Nothas incoming there for Apophanas as well. He's also trying to ground fire. And Deja Vu actually down to around 50% HP here. 11,000 left on him so far. Decent AoE on these shells from the fatty it's not an easy thing to ground fire a submerged unit there it's on the move takes a lot of skill and now we've got shockers incoming from wet lettuce let's go to split screen to keep an eye on both of these situations because potentially two ACUs are in a spot of bother here in comes the soul ripper for Moist Lettuce going straight after Sid. Deja Vu, meanwhile, down to around 7,500 hit points. We've still got a lot of Nothas coming in from Apophanas, causing yet more problems. The Soul Ripper, meanwhile, switches up to kill some of the Strategic stuff in the main detected. base. And there goes the nuke from Sid. Where is it going? That's the question. I'm wondering if it's going anywhere near Deja Vu's commander going to keep an eye on the nuke with the left screen I'm sure they've got anti-nuke unless it's been killed with the artillery which it detected. hasn't Hepco is all over that no problems there whatsoever but Deja Vu has been forced to come right forward and what Butek taken out by a tele snipe from Nexus and down goes Siddle at the same time. And Nexus doesn't make it out of there. So it's a two for one trade. Again in favor of team one. And then it leaves Epophanas facing three. Now Nexus gave all of his stuff over to lettuce temporarily to give him extra mass and and stuff but just wow unbelievable and now that leaves little old apophanas in a base admittedly he's got a lot of mass around him and he's uh quite burrowed in here not a decent chance to affect some damage with that uh, artillery piece he has lost his nuke though because of course that was um or well, Team 2 have lost their nuke, I should say. That was Sid that had that. So, can't rely on hitting anti-nukes with the artillery and trying to nuke them. But a Novax. Um, real. Deja vu. Such a loser, man. <laughs> I don't know. I, ah, Novax are alright. I always say yeah, just It always seems like you build it. You're just like, ugh. No backs, so lame. A little bit of a push here from Hepco. Loyalists coming in to the east of Bofanas' base, but a ruddy great Ethota out front. Deals most of the necessary damage long before they get inside the shield. There's so much bubbling going on in here. This is going to be a tough one to crack. Does he actually have... He has anti-nuke out, out front with five anti-nuke missiles loaded and ready to go. 
And that Novax just stands no chance whatsoever of breaking through that shielding. There is no point in wasting. He might as well go after the T3 mexes. He, there's a uh, an artillery installation there he can pick out and just basically pick off anything that's outside of the shield. But with that level of shielding, it's absolutely pointless trying to bust through. You'll never accomplish it. You would need about five Novaxes, four or five Novaxes probably to break through that. Or maybe three. It might be a bit of exaggeration. I like to, if you hadn't realized already. It's kind of my thing. Shocker inbound and going after the TMD at the moment. Lettuce wanting to potentially open up a route for the Billy. And I think that might be a little bit close there. and don't seem to be any more strap bombers incoming. Actually, well, there it is. It's going to be a close one. But there is this one down here still. And that Billy's not going to get through. Down it goes. And so does the Shocker. Two TMDs left out front. And Apophanas has a serious task of turtling ahead of him. He doesn't have any hope of expanding. He's His best bet is he needs to keep that artillery emplacement alive and burrow in as best he can. But it's such a tall order. Team 1 now free to expand to just about every corner of the map. Looks like we've got a little bit of a drop now occurring from Deja Vu. Five transports all laden with T3 units. Those have been gifted over there from Lettuce. And they're going to drop Percy's well, conservatively, not too close to the shield. Didn't want to lose too many to the ASFs. You can see a couple of them going down there. But four groups make landfall. Uh, that was an interesting decision landing up there on the ridge. Definitely wouldn't have recommended that. But I'll now have to walk all the way around. Hoffenas throwing together T2PD as quickly as he can. There are three shields that are covering these, really. And this one is about to collapse. There they go. So T2PD's exposed. Two of the Percival's down, six remain, but of course two are way out here. Another Billy inbound, and that is the end of the TMD out front. But look at the amount of TMD that's under cover of shield there. A few bricks over in the east belonging to Hepco. And more TMD under construction. And you see the amount of time it's taken that TMD to chew through these Percivals. Those Percys could have walked inside the shield right up to the artillery installation and taken it out. I mean, I suppose, of course, Poffinas is right there with his comm. An overcharge would have sorted them out reasonably quickly. But they could have at least got in here, maybe taken down a few shield gens, maybe even a, a T3 power plant. Another few Percys coming in from the northeast there from Deja Vu, but chicken is ready and waiting no problem there for him a major tack missile base under construction deja vu is all about the manual missile attack and this one billy nukes coming in left right and center and now tons of tack missiles on the way as well and a forward t2 manufacturing facility being thrown together here producing t2 engineers at the moment Sparkies. Why not Sparkies? Make Sparkies, Deja Vu. I command it. I love the Sparkies with their little machine gun on top. And meanwhile, of course, the consistent artillery fire is taking its toll on Team 1. One could hurt. That one could hurt a lot. Down goes the T3 power plant. And shielding just not emerging at any sufficient rate from Team 1 to cover their base. 
are all about the attack, trying to finish this off as best they can. The back still buzzing around overhead. I mean, look at all of the exposed T3 to be going for. There we go. He's given up on the shield, which is wise. Pepco going for a Telemazer as well. So that is how they're planning to end this one. Teleport in, kill Apophanas' ACU. Hepco might die in the process, but ultimately that's going to be a win for Team 1 with two people remaining, potentially. Another Billy on the way. And that could connect, but there's so much shielding. It's just not going to cause any major problems. It will take down these spy planes if uh, they're close enough to it when it lands. As you can see, the shield just holds fast. I can see why it doesn't get built very often. The game certainly isn't of uh, any major use. Early game, it can be devastating. But a Tsar under construction now from Lettuce. And another Novax on the way. Stop building Novax! Stop it! People might think I'm a major proponent of Novax being as it's UEF, but I'm not. They are... Oh, horrible. Strategic launch detected. Horrible experimental. And a nuke out from Apophanas. So he's throwing to one together pretty darn quickly at the back there. And I'm wondering if he's been going after the anti-nuke for Team 1. This could cause a whole lot of problems in the center of their base. There is an anti nuke there at the back from Hepco, but there's nothing in it. It's fired its load already. Boom, baby! Oh my god! Deja vu eating that one. Drops him down to 88. Mastic. And that, this is astonishing that we've got to 58 minutes. I haven't mentioned the eco once, but what? There goes the telemazer attempt from Hepco, and it hasn't gone well. So Hepco suicides into the back of Apophanas' base. Unreal. I told you I was going to miss things in this one, and I was right. Staying on top of things is just incredibly difficult in a 5v5. Even at this stage when we're down to what was 2v2, but away goes another Massive volley of TAC missiles. Would you look at that TAC missile firebase? Deja Vu wants retribution, missile based retribution for that nuke to the center of his base. There's a lot of TND in the area. Obviously, very concerned about the Billy nuke. So he's built lots of TND, but that was going straight for Apophanas' con. But Apophanas wisely moves out of the way. And elsewhere, lots of pinging going on for other things that Deja Vu could be going after with those TAC missiles. Namely, of course, the nuke launcher and the artillery emplacement, which is definitely the thing that's uh, causing the most issues. That's what's allowed the nuke to get through. And would you look at the state of Team 1... 90% map control. 10% of a clue what to do with it. There's no way I can see them winning. I mean, unless they get another opportunity at a snipe. They've lost their cybered player, so no chance with that, really. There's just There was so much T1 PD lined out there. That's what uh, killed off Hepco first. And uh, Poffinas is pretty damn chunky at full HP. 18,500 there. More Billy Nukes going off at the front of 
Apophanas' base, but he can feel pretty comfortable about the way he's tanking at the moment. Nexus speaking from beyond the grave, asking Lettuce to make anti-nuke and not a czar. What happened to that other one? Did that uh, other one get taken out in the nuke or was it completed? Be lingering somewhere, you'd think I wouldn't miss a flipping great city sized spaceship. Stranger things have happened. Apophonus trying to destroy this base, and he manages to take down about five of those TAC missile launchers. Really is the strangest game. Epic amounts of map control. It's nice to see, actually. Epic amounts of map control in Team 1's hands. Lots of firepower are strewn about the map. And at the moment they're losing to a guy who's burrowed in like an annoying tick. Just turtling away, stinging them at range with artillery. They're still trying to work out a way to get a snipe on to kill Apophanas. Finish him off finally. Another Billy Nuke out to the front. One hour, two minutes gone in this one so far. Another wave of TAC missiles, this time going straight after the chicken. It connects and down goes the chicken. There will be a little bit of extra damage, of course, on the shield from the Ion Storm. Ion Storm's pretty damn good at killing shields. <laughs> this very cheeky Gunther build on the corner there. I'm not sure what it's going to be able to hit with that second amount, second group. Nothing I should imagine. I'm surprised that first one that he's managed to build is even making it through the gap there. Shows you how high the firing arc is. Another wave of tack missiles out. Brutal tack missile battery. It's collapsing shields everywhere as it goes. Boom, baby! Connect! with a T3 P gen and tears a ruddy great hole in the middle of Apophanas's shielding. I might have spoken too soon. I thought this was all over and Apophanas was sure to win it. Apophanas is actually firing back with tack missiles of his own. And there's not a great amount of TMD in that base at all. In fact, there's none. Streams of attack missiles coming in one at a time now. Single fire from Deja Vu definitely doesn't want them coming in like that. Needs a consistent volley to overwhelm shields and TMD. Trickle won't get anything done. Another Billy out from Deja Vu. I don't know how many he's fired over the course of this one. He's only killed 89 units though with that ACU, so it shows you the amount he's fired, how much has actually been achieved with them. UEF with no consideration to local ecology whatsoever. Irradiating everything is always a good plan. But even so, losing that T3P gen and I think must have been all of the shield gens around it. Still looking pretty solid and in fact the overall radius or overall diameter of Apophanas's base is increasing as he pops more shield gens out to encompass the exterior mass points and bring in more eco. Apophanas sitting on 196 so lettuce 341 Deja Vu 171, they're so far ahead in terms of eco, and yet seemingly at the moment without a way to deal with Apophanas. They've got pretty well re-established though, since that uh, nuke took out Deja Vu's base. Getting some more comprehensive shield cover together to try and protect 
the Eco. Another Billy out. Right in front of the uh, cliff this time. My eyes. So many TAC missile launchers. That's unreal. Poffinas Strategic launch detected. has been dedicating himself to some pretty heavy TMD distribution. Another wave incoming. And I think that's going to be considerably less successful than the last attack. And this is the problem. Every time Team 1 throw something at Apophanas and it doesn't cripple him effectively in any major way, Apophanas counters and makes his base that little bit tougher to kill next time. But that's a beautiful nuke landing right in the center there for Moist Lettuce, his base. And that is... That has got to be the end of his air production. And now Tsar is taking some artillery fire as well. We might actually lose. Well, yes, I think that the way this is going at the moment, it's not looking good. Definitely isn't looking good. Just don't know how they can't get this funnel or channel this eco into resisting. I mean, they, they couldn't get burrowed in properly up here. They need to get proper shield coverage going on to fight off all of this artillery fire. Now, these two people now firing at each other. We've got Deja Vu firing Gunthers into the brow of a hill. And TAC missiles coming back from Apophanas landing in the other side of the hill. It's a uh, major Sim City fail going on. Ones are out now, moving down the west. Or western edge for Lettuce. And they've spied the chicken that's come out to deal with these Gunthers. Well, there's absolutely no threat from them whatsoever. And that's actually just throwing a chicken away. There's no mobile force on the field for Apophanas. So he cannot protect any units coming out away from his base. So that is why this turtle has emerged. And it's actually unreal how much difficulty Team 1 have had with this. And I honestly, I'm wondering if they're even in a position to do anything now. Ecos are looking strong, especially combined, but they're so light on facilities and developments. They're so spread out. There's no concentration of firepower to attack from little pockets of units but none of which are strong enough to punch a hole in anything and slowly but surely they're getting taken apart another wave of tap missiles off but boom baby Poffinus now retasking that artillery piece to go after the tack missile base this is standby to launch Chicken gets nailed, eats an awful lot of fire, but moves before it can get killed off completely. One hour, 11 minutes we're coming up to now, and still in no danger of crossing the finish line anytime soon. It doesn't look like we can afford to bump it to plus three since there's not a great deal going on on this one so far. A cheeky little PD creep going on here from one lone T2 engineer from Deja Vu. Trying to sneak in some triads. Not going to get too far with that on its own, I shouldn't think. TMD already taken out one of them.
doing on the next nuke? Well, that's uh, two thirds done so far. And that one's going to hurt. Oh. Whoa! Deja vu! That is a beautiful little read from Apothenas. Spied the com in the water and tack missiled it. No more Billy Nukes incoming for Apothenas. Down he goes. One hour, 12 minutes. And he's ejected the, the, from the game and it becomes a one-on-one. -on -one. And frankly, from this position, I cannot see Lettuce being able to do anything. You see we're starting to see some ASFs now emerge for Apophanas. All he needs to do is sit and turtle and continue to oppress and Lettuce is done. Doesn't matter that he's outstripping Apophanas' eco by 30%. He hasn't got the tools to break him. All of the map control in the world at this point means nothing. So, oh, almost eats an artillery shell there as it takes off. So he has got two Zars on the field. GC's up front. Harbinger's incoming. Restorer's out to the east. Restorer's going to focus on the Ithotas. Those two Zars going to link up over in the bottom left-hand corner. Where is Apophanas' com? Well, it's dead center in the middle of his base. Can the Zars get to it? That is the question. How many Sams are we talking about here? We're talking about 80 Sams in the region, so it's going to be incredibly difficult. I'm trying to break in the front door with the GC as well, but there's so much T2PD. The hit points just evaporate. There he goes. Another GC over to the east. Lettuce clearly had enough of this now. Wants to get this over and done with. In comes a wave of ASFs to spy and none of them make it out alive. That's what happens when you fly over a base with 80 Sams in the center. And another nuke out for Epophanas. Lettuce sending in only one. Czar. And that probably gets shot down. Well, that was a weak. Why he didn't send both of them in, I don't know. But you saw how quickly it went down anyway. I don't think there would have been any danger of it killing the ACU. Newt comes in well in the back. Moist Lettuce runs away from that. But it's all for naught. And he control case has come. Down he goes. One hour, 16 minutes of game time. Unbelievable turnaround. But then you think about it. The early game, Team 1 was smashing... Sorry, Team 2 was smashing Team 1. So the pendulum swung in two different directions over the course of this one. Very impressive game. And a very impressive from Apophanas holding out 3v1 in the end there. Very good stuff. Anyway, guys, hope you like that. As always, more to come from me in the future. In the meantime, though, stay well and stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.